Hi guys, we are back to our class. Today I will take you through the matrices. You know matrices falls under the category of algebra 2. And you start learning matrices as early as high school. You will be taught matrices in your A levels and even at the campus. Like some of my students doing the quantitative ana analysis and the quantitative techniques, we do a lot of matrices. So I'll walk you through because somebody may ask, what is a matrix, matrices, or what is a matrix in singular? Now, a matrix is simply an array of numbers or objects. Remember, matrices is used across. In physics, we use matrices in calculating some energies. In the business, in arranging of stuff, arranging objects, arranging products. And we will get to learn more about the uses of a matrix. But just need to know that it's an array of numbers. So anytime you hear about a matrix, is an array of numbers or objects which will finally form what is called the columns and they will also form of rows. So we'll talk about the columns and we'll also talk about the rows. Now, this is what I want us to look into. Now let me start, for example, giving you maybe types. We have what is called a column matrix. If I give you two, three, four, then I put in bracket. Remember any time we talk about matrices, you must always put the bracket. If you don't bracket it, then they are not matrices. So that's what we call a column matrix. Remember when I talk about a column, column means vertically down. So this is what we call a column matrix. I'm walking you closely until the time I'll get to the peak. Now we also have what is called a row matrix. I would have rewritten it maybe one, four, seven. Then I put the bracket. Remember in matrices, we do not put commas for those numbers. Maybe you are talking about your containers you've imported or in whatever form. So we put them in rows. So this is simply called row matrix, and we have what is called a column matrix. The other type of matrix that we can remember is called square. Square matrix. And I know very well most of you are aware of what a square is. Right from your middle school, those people doing the Cambridge, you know very well that a square is a four-sided figure which is a quadrilateral, having the side by side. Now, I can give you two, negative one, zero, and four. So these are square matrix. Why do we call it a square? Because the columns are vertical, so we have two columns, and the rows, we can call this one row one, and we call this one row two. So we can call this one column one, and we call it column two. So this numbers that we have, we normally call them entries. We call them entries. We call them entries or we call them elements. So next time somebody asking you what is the entry in a matrix are simply the numbers that form that matrix. So those people in high school and in a levels, I hope you get me well. So these are simply entries or we call them elements. And I've said we simply call it a square matrix because the number of rows is equal to the... So this one we call it a two by two matrix. I know next time somebody may ask you that, how do we name the matrix? We normally start with the rows, then we go to columns. So this one we are going to call it to be a two by two because it has the two rows and the two columns. I think that one makes sense. What if I give you this a square matrix? There are some matrix that are not square. An example, it can be 4, negative 1, 0, maybe 3, 7, 10. If we have this matrix, we will call it, we start with the rows, then we go to columns. So how many rows do we have in that matrix? We have 1, 2. So we call it 2 times. How many columns? 
the first column, second, and third. So we call it a two by three matrix. So that's how we name a matrix in terms of the rows and columns. But we must always make sure that we start with the rows, then we go to the columns. I'm giving you a brief definition of matrices before we get into other applications. So we've seen the square, the row, the column. Then we have what is called identity matrix. Identity. When we talk about identity matrix, it simply means when you have a matrix in the form of A, B, C, and D, if this is your matrix, remember the A and D represents what is called the leading diagonal. Then this is the minor. Now, if you have a, an, an identity matrix, the leading diagonals be, will be one unit each. The other one will be zero. So this is an example of what we call identity. And remember, we usually abbreviate it with I. So when we talk about identity matrix, the leading diagonal will be one, unit one. The other elements will definitely be a zero. So I think that one makes sense. Now, this is simply a two by two identity matrix. We can go to maybe three by three. And remember, it will be one, zero, 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 one, zero, 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 one. So remember, when you look into your leading diagonal, there will be one each. Other entries or other elements will be zero. So we call this type of a matrix identity matrix. Then we have what is called the lower triangular and the upper triangular. So what do I mean? If I give you an example, three, four, one, uh, maybe zero. So this is the upper triangle because if you check this, these are numbers, but the lower part is zero. The other way around, if you reflect it, we get the lower triangular matrix. So these are some of the few matrices that we have. We also have what is called singular matrix. Singular matrix. Now when I talk about a singular matrix, it is a matrix without a determinant. And I'm going to teach you what a determinant of a matrix is. I'm just starting by the definition, by the types. By the time we will get into those calculations, you will know what we are talking about. So singular matrix does not have a determinant. So we, if we call it matrix M, the determinant will be equal to zero. So this is a singular matrix. Then we will also consider what is called, that is what is called symmetric matrix. Symmetric. Now what is symmetric matrix? A symmetric matrix is a matrix that is the same as its transpose, which I'm also going to teach you. Let me give you an example here. If we had our matrix, an example we had here to be A, B, C, D. Now remember, when we talk about a transpose matrix, let me write that word here, transpose. To transpose a matrix means to make the rows to be columns and columns to be rows. What do I mean? Now, if you have this matrix here to be A, B, C, and D, if this is your matrix and you want to transpose it, we raise it to power T, either small T or you can put capital T, which means we are transposing it. So the row one, remember I told you, the horizontal one are rows, that is row one, that is row two. Then this is column one and column two. So row one becomes the column one. The row two becomes the column two. So I'm taking this, I'm putting it here, I'm taking this, I'm putting it there. So that means we are transposing that matrix. If you find a situation where if you transpose, you will still find the same, same numbers here. If it was A, B, you will still find here, it, you will still find the same numbers by transposing, then we call it a symmetric matrix. That's how we normally call them the symmetric matrix. So I wanted to walk you guys, first of all, you know the type of matrices we have. Then the very first immediate, I'll teach you some of the mathematical operations. So kindly allow me, Rab. Then 
I explain now the real part of the math. And some of you who feel they, they still need more help, you can always get in touch. You can call me, guys, and we can always walk together. Let me dry it. Take this to make it a little cleaner. So when I'm explaining, you see it well. So by the end of the lesson, if you feel you still need my help, you can always call my number. Whether you are in Kenya, whether you are in Europe, in America, Canada, Australia, that's my number. You just need to put the code. Now, the first thing that I'll take you through is the operations. So what do I simply mean by the operation? The plus, the minus, and the times. Adding matrices, subtracting matrices, and multiplying matrices. Just like you do with all ordinary numbers. An example, I can come and say, what is 3 squared? Which simply means 3 times 3, which is 9. Now, I'll take you through how do we add matrices, how do we subtract, and how do we multiply. Let me give you an example. If I say matrix A is 4, 7, maybe 0, 1, then I say matrix, matrix B is negative 1, 4, 6, 3. Then somebody comes and asks you, what is A plus B? Just like you deal with the ordinary algebra. We simply add the corresponding elements, just like I had taught you before. That these are entries, or we call them the elements. Now remember, the number four here, is it, is, it is in the first column and the first row. First column, first row. So we only add the corresponding elements. So you will take your 4, you add to minus 1. Remember 4 plus minus 1 is like 4 take away 1, which is 3. And remember the brackets. Then 0 plus 6, we get 6. 1 plus 3, we get 4. 7 plus 4, we get 11. Remember we simply add the corresponding what? The corresponding elements in that matrix. So do not come and take 0 plus 4, no. According to the rows and the columns where each and every number falls. What about if we are talking about subtraction? If it is A minus B, what are we supposed to do? We simply subtract the corresponding elements. And get it very right. So you take 4 minus minus 1, which is becoming 5. 0 minus 6, negative 6. 7 minus 4, 3. 1 minus 3, minus 2. Remember when you take a small number minus big number, you get a negative. So I think my students now get it well. Right? Now, when we minus matrices, we simply minus the corresponding elements. And in math, you just need to be patient. You take your time and you do one at a time. What about multiplication? If it is A times B. That is where most of my students have been asking so many questions. Not just here in Kenya, elsewhere. How do we multiply matrices? Just like I'd said, 3 squared is 3 times 3, which is 9. An example, if I give you, let's speak, maybe 4, negative 2, 0, 5. Then somebody say square. Or let, let's not put the square there. Let me rub that. Let me say this is matrix matrix m is that then somebody asking you find m squared are we good now m squared simply means you take m times m just like what you learned in the ordinary algebra which means m squared is simply m times m so what am i supposed to do please do not square this there was a student who was squaring squaring for Writing 16, squaring negative 2. No, you do not square the individual elements. Squaring a number means you take that number times itself and get it right. So what I'm, we are supposed to do, we take 4, minus 2, 0, 5. We multiply by itself. 4, minus 2, 0, 5. And that is the step in maths. What I call coming up with a model, laying out a plan. Which plan are we talking about? We know very well that the meaning of a square, so write that number times itself the way we were doing with ordinary numbers. 
Now, how do we multiply matrices? Just like I said, you begin with the rows, then column. The same is applicable to the product. You will take the first times this. Listen to this. This the only tricky part in multiplying matrices. Now listen. You take the first row times first column. So this is the first row. The first row is 4 minus 2. I multiply by first column 4, 0. And I want to walk you very closely. If you want to get the element at the first entry. The first row here times the first column. The first column of the next. Remember we go by the rule RC. The rows times column. This is my first row. This is my first column. And the first entry here is 4. Second entry is minus 2. First entry is 4. Second entry is 0. So we take first times first plus second times second. So we take 4 times 4 is, if you say 4 times 4 is 16 plus minus 2 times 0. Why do I do that? Because these are the first and they are the second. So 16 plus minus 2 is the same as 16 minus 2, which is 14. So my first element becoming what? 14. Then if you want the down here, you take the second row here. The second row here, which is 0, 5. We will multiply by 4, 0. This row times this column. Because you want, you want what? You want row 2 and column 1. So you will take the row 2. Remember this is row 2. Allow me wrap this part. You know this one is row 1. This you know is column 1 and column 2. So if you want the entry here, what is the entry here? The entry here is column 1 but row 2. So I'll take my row 2 here, which is 0, 5, times column 1, which is 4, 0. Then we multiply each element. Each. 0 times 4 is 0, plus 5 times 0 is 0. So we get our entry there to be a 0. You got it right. Then if you want the entry here, see how it is easy to multiply matrices. If you want your entry at this point, which point is this? Because you know very well the first one is column 1, column 2. So this is row 1 and row 2. So at this point I need row 1 and column 2. So you will just come and get your row 1 and your column 2 to get the elements here. Just by the definition of what I simply introduced. So I'll take, for me to get here, what is the entry here? R1, which is row 1 here, and column 2. Here is, if you stand here, it's like reading coordinates in, a, in algebra. So here is R1, here is C2. So we get R1, C2. So what is R1? R1 was supposed to be 4, negative 2. And C2 is supposed to be negative 2, 5. Negative 2, 5. Then we apply the RC rule. Start with the row, then column. So first one times first one. 4 times negative 2, we get negative 8. Plus negative 2 times 5 is negative 10. So negative 8 minus 10, we get minus 18. Then you can now get this for yourself. Because here is supposed to be row 2, column 2. So we are going to take the row 2. The row 2 here is 0, 5. And column 2 is supposed to be minus 2, 5. So 0 times 2 is 0, plus 5 times 5, which is 25. So this is the product of this particular matrix. This is the product of that particular matrix. So you see how we multiply matrices. It is not a big deal. You simply obey the RC, means you start with the rows, then you go to the columns. I hope you are getting the bit, the concept of what I mean. So, remember in matrices, you know, if I give you numbers, for example, if I give you a number, an example here, 4 times 3 is the same as 3 times 4. You can interchange them. So that is what we call the commutativity or commutative property. Commutative property. So commutativity is not applicable in matrices. The first matrix times second is not the same as the second times first. So if they ask in an exam to find the matrix A, B, please. Now, we just did some of the products. Let 
let's guess a number of matrices and multiply. If I give you matrix A is 4, 2, 1, 3, then matrix B, I give you to be 7, 0, negative 1, 4. Then I come and ask you, what is A, B? Remember, A, B is not, as, is not the same as it's not the same as BA because commutativity is not practical in matrices. Now, how do we go about AB? AB means I have 4, 2, 1, 3. We have to bracket the entries. 7, negative 1, 0, and 4. Now, let us do the multiplication. As I just guided you, now you know what we are doing. We start with RC. If you want here, you take... The row 1 times column 1. Are we good? So you know very well that this is row 1 throughout column 1. No, row 2, sorry. Row 2 here. So this is column 1, column 2 for this matrix. This is column 1 and column 2. Now if I want here, remember I'll start with the column 1, then column 2. Row 1 row 2. At this point, I need to have row 1 and column 1. So row 1 is here and column 1. So 4 times 7, 28. Plus 2 times 0 is 0. So here we get 28. So row 1, column 2, what am I supposed to do? I will multiply the row 1 times column 2. So row 1 is 4, 2. So 4 times minus 1 is minus 4 plus 8. What is minus 4 plus 8 is 4. Then here, Row 2, column 1. So I take my row 2 times column 1. Okay, so 1 times 7 is 7, plus 3 times 0, which is 0, so we get a 7. Then here, row 2, column 2, we take the row 2 times column 2. 1 times minus 1 is minus 1, plus 12 is 11. So that is A, B. But remember, if you go against the rule, if you change the B, A, you will realize they will be different. Because if you start 7 minus 1, 0 and 4, then you take 4, 2, 1, 3, you will get 7 times 4 is 28, minus 1 is, 20, is 27. So 0 plus 4, we get 4 here. So 7, 14, minus 3 is 11, 0 plus 12. So don't you see the answers are different? So commutativity is not applicable in matrices. Are we good? But remember, if you have the matrix A times B times C, is the same as A times B times C, you can get the product of, of B, C times A will still be the same as the product of A, B times C. So we say in mathematics that associativity, associativity is applicable in matri matrices. Associative property. Associative property. So asso associativity is, is not, uh, is possible in matrices, but not commutativity. You cannot change the order of the matrix. Are we good? Now from there, I've taught you how to multiply, how to divide. Now, I want to teach you also about some 3 by 3 matrix. An example, if somebody giving you 4, 7, 3, 2, 1, 0, maybe 1, 2, maybe 1. If you have this matrix, call it matrix A. Then you have matrix B, negative 1, 0, 4, maybe 10, 5, 1, 2, 1, maybe 3. Now those are two matrices. In addition, if you add them, you simply add the corresponding what? Elements. But remember, what if we multiply A times B? If somebody asks you, what is the product of A times B? Now remember, we are doing a 3x3 three three matrix. So we are going to have a 4, 2, 1. I'm just copying these entries. 1, 2, 3, 0, 1. Then I get as a product with negative 1, 0, 4. 10, 5, 1, 2, 1, 3. Just the same as what we did initially. So remember, this is row 1, row 2, row 3. Column 1, column 2, column 3 in that order. Row, column 1, column 2, column 3. So when you want to get the entry here, which is row 1, column 1, you take this times that. So 4 times minus 1 is minus 4. 7 times 10 is 70. So minus 4 plus 70 is 66. 
66 plus 6 is 72. So we get this times that, this times this, this times that, then we put it here. Then the down here, we take again 2 times minus 1 is minus 2. 1 times 10 is 10. So this 10 minus 2 is 8, right? Because remember this. Okay? So minus 2, minus 2 plus 10 is, is 8. 8 plus 0, we simply get 8. Then the downward part, remember we want to get column 1 but row 3. So we, we are going to start with the row. Remember the RC rule. Here what do we want? We want is the first column but the third row, the lower part. So we must start with the, the third row times first column. So first element, first element. Second, second, third and third. So 1 times minus 1 is minus 1. Right? 2 times 10 is 20. 20 minus 1 is 19. 1 times 2 is 2 plus 19. We get 21. Then if you want to get the second, if you want to get here, which means the second column and first row, so you'll take the first row times second column here. So 4 and 0 is 0. 7 and 5 is 35. So 35 plus 0 is 35. 3 times 1 is 3. 3 plus 35 we get 38. Okay? Then you get here second, second, second row, second column. So you'll pick the second row and the second column. 2 and 0 is 0. 1 and 5 is 5. 5 plus 0 we simply get a 5. Then here, we are going to get second column, third row. So my second column, what do we get here? Second column, but third row. So I start row 3, column 2. So row 3, column 2. So 1 times 0 is 0. 2 by 5 is 10. 10 plus 1 is 11. Then we get here, which is the third column, first row. So row 1, column 3. So I'll start with... Row 1, column 3. So 4 by 4 is 16. 16 plus 7 is 23. 23 plus 9 is 32. Then here we get, uh, what do, which element is here? This is column 3, row 2. So row 2, column 3. So I start with row 2, column 3. 2 by 4 is 8. 8 plus 1 is 9. 9 plus 0 is simply 9. Then we last, remember this was 1. Then we go to row, row 3, column 3. So row 3, column 3. 1 times 4 is 4. 4 plus 2 is 6. 6 plus 3 is, is 9. So this is the product of that given matrix. Remember, we obey the RC rule. You start with the row times column. So this is the product of a 3 by 3 matrix. Now let me show you something now we call... Uh, the determinant of a matrix. We'll get the determinant of a 2 by 2. Then I teach you the determinant of a 3 by 3. Let us wipe it well. Now, what I want us to explain here, what is the determinant of a matrix? Now, if you have a matrix in the form of A, B, C, and D, if that is your matrix, Determinant is simply the difference between the leading diagonal minus the minor diagonal. So we are simply going to get determinant of that matrix M is AD. Remember AD is the leading. So A times D minus BC. That's how we get the determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix. Let's, let me give you an example. Maybe 4, 7, negative 1, 0. If this is your matrix... Call it matrix A. Then somebody comes and asks to find the determinant of A. Sometimes it is abbreviated in most Cambridge textbooks to be two absolute values. So what is the determinant of that matrix? I know you can easily get it by simply saying 4 times 0, because that is the leading diagonal, minus 7 times 1. 7 times minus 1. So here we get a 0 minus minus 7. But negative, negative in your middle school should be a positive. So you get the determinant to be, to be a 7. So these are 2 by 2 matrix, very direct. Can I give you a little difficult question, a 3 by 3? Now if somebody comes and tell you the matrix B is 4, negative 1, 0, 
Let me not use a zero. Let me use a three. Maybe two, one. Uh, I get three, negative two, maybe five. This is now a three by three. Then somebody comes and asks you, find the determinant of this matrix. You remember these are brackets. Let me put them curly. You know, remember, those are the brackets of a matrix. But sometimes, let me change my marker. Sometimes, if they just come and put find the determinant, it simply means you can find them putting two straight line. Four, negative one, three, seven, two, one, three minus two, five. Then those two straight lines simply means you want to find the determinant of this matrix. And it's a three by three. And remember what? You can only find the determinant of a square matrix. You can only find the determinant of a square matrix because it has the three rows. It is the three rows and three columns. So the rows are three and the columns are also three. So how do we go about finding the determinant of a three by three matrix? The steps is very easy. There's a formula that says you start with the plus minus plus. So for the first row, this one we do for the row one. So you take the plus of this number, so plus four, then you put some bracket, then minus of this, the minus of the minus is plus one. Then you put the, the bracket. Then lastly, the plus, plus three. Then you put the bracket. Now, what do I mean by all this? I want to show you the stages in finding that. Allow me rub so that my point will be made clear. Allow me rub this where we did the two by two. Because already now you know it is simply there. The process is very simple. It's simply taking the, the leading diagonal minus minor. Now if you want to find the determinant of a three by three matrix, you start with the plus of this, which is plus four. Then the minus from the formula, minus of the next element. So if it's a negative, it becomes a positive one. Then you put those determinants, then plus the last element or entry. Now what do I mean? When you come to where there is four, this here, you are going to highlight that number. After highlighting it, I want to explain. It crosses everything down and it crosses everything. Now, if you identify a number like four, you cross the column where it is and you cross that row. So what remains there? What we are going to have there is what? If I put it this way, we are only going to remain with two, one, negative two, five. Can you check what is remaining? So we are going to have two, one, negative two, five. Then if you come to where there is one, it was a minus of this. So the next one was supposed to be this one. So you cross throughout and you cross throughout. So the numbers remain is what we will consider. See what will remain. Seven, one, three, seven, one, three, five. You see how it remains. So you take seven, one. 3, 5. 7, 1, 3, 5. Then the last part was a plus of that number, which is a 3. You highlight it. Then it will cross that column and that row. So it is crossing like that. Which numbers do you see remaining? 7, 2, 3, negative 1. So we have 7, 2, 3, negative. No, what did I, what did you see? 7, 2, 3, negative 2. Now, that's now the beginning of the journey. Now, this is what we are supposed to do. Now, we take this number here. We multiply by whatever we get the determinant here. Why are we doing this? Whatever we are getting here, we call them cofactor matrix. We call them cofactor matrices. The cofactor matrices. Because we want to find a 2 by 2 that we can easily get. The leading diagonals product minus minor. So when you are here, 2 times 5 is 10 minus 1 times minus 2. So it's 10 minus minus 3, which is plus 2, we get 14. Remember our formula. When we had A, B, C, D, and I said the determinant of this matrix 
was supposed to be AD minus BC. That's what we apply here. So plus 1 here. So 35. 7 times 5 is at least the leading. 35 minus minus. So 35 minus 3 is 32. Then plus 3 here. Negative 14. The two product. Minus 14 minus 6 is minus 20. So here we get 56 plus 32 minus 60. So what is 56 plus 32? It's 88 minus 60 which provides 28. So 28 will be the determinant of this matrix. And remember finding the determinants you will only be given about you will be given about uh, about about three marks. That's how we find the determinant of a three by three matrix. Can you try this? Four negative one seven zero four thirteen six eight nine. Can you call this matrix T and find the determinant? I'm giving you that one so that you try it by yourself. You try it by yourself. So that is how we find the determinant of a three by three matrix, guys. I can still see from the clock was, stop clock. We have some six minutes. Some six minutes. So I've already taught you how we find the determinant of a three by three. Let me do this one with you again. Now that we still have some adequate time as per, you know, we had, had set some, the camera covered that specific timing. Now let's check here. Aha. Now what are we supposed to do? Plus four, then we open for the, for the square. Then remember it is a plus, minus, then plus. This is the rule. So the minus of the minus is plus. So plus one. Then plus of the last, which is plus seven. Then let's, let's get the deal. Where's my marker? So when you start with a four, so you delete that column and you delete that row. So it will be like this. So what remains? Four, 13, eight, nine. Four, 13, eight, nine. Then we go to one here. Delete that column where it falls under that row. So we are going to remain 0, 13, 6, 9. 0, 13, 6, 9. Then lastly, where we have 7, you delete that column and that row. So we have 0, 4, 6, 8. 0, 4, 6, 8. Then we find the determinant. So it is 4 as a product. 9 times 4 is 36. 36 minus 8 times 13. 8 times 13 is 102. What is 13 times 8? We get 24 to 104. So 36 minus 104. 36 minus 104. Let me do it here. 104 minus 36. We borrow 114 minus that 8. Uh, 9, 6. So it is 68, but it's a negative. Then plus 1. A 0 times 9 is 0, minus 6 times 13 is 78. So it is a negative as well. So plus 7, 0 minus 24 negative. So everything is negative here. So what is 68 times 4? It's like 60 times 4 is 240 plus 32, 272. Then minus 78 here. 24 times 7 is like 20 times 7, 140 plus 28, 168. Negative. So we minus everything. So it's like adding them. So we get 272, 78, we get 0, uh, 5, 3, 168, we get 8, 1, 5. So the answer is negative 518. Negative 518. So this is the determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix. So I've taught you the determinant of a 2 by 2 and determinant of a 3 by 3. You can pause my videos, guys, and keep checking. Because after this, I'll be teaching you how do we find the inverse of a matrix. Then after the inverse, we will go to eigenvectors. We go to eigenvalues. Then we go to the application, 
which is so much uh, important to the students doing their A-levels. So remember, matrices are very important. They are found in, in Algebra 2, those people doing the Cambridge system. So I would like my students to try to follow this channel and subscribe. Uh, our, our, the name is Disneyland International. Or you can find my YouTube, you can find my video through uh, Teacher Boaz, where you find most of my, my videos, my tutorials. But these are very effective concepts that will help you guys come up with brilliant ideas. Now, before we turn to the inverse of a matrix, before we turn to the inverse of a matrix, I had already taught you about something transposing, which I would like to, rem to remind you. If you get maybe, uh, sorry, if you have a number, maybe 4, negative 1, 0, 3, 2, 7, 6, 5, maybe negative uh, 4. If you have this, call it matrix T. If somebody asks you to find the transpose, to transpose a matrix which they are going to put with a T on top, simply means you will make your row 1 to be your column 1, your row 2 to be column 2, and your row 3 to be column 3. So you change rows to columns. That's what we call it to transpose or matrix transpose. So what is the transpose of T? Call this matrix maybe M now because transpose stands for T. So 4, negative 1, 0, 3, 2, 7, 6, 5, and minus 4. So this is the transpose of this particular matrix. So that is a trans transposing a matrix. Now you know how, for example, if you have 4, 1, 3, from this, this, this simply row 1, of course it is, it is a 1 by 3 matrix because it has 1 row and we normally follow the formula RC. So row 1 and 3 columns. So if I transpose this matrix, I'll get it to be 4, 1, 3. So you see, I have changed the, the row to be the column. So this transposing becomes very important when we determine the inverse of a 3 by 3 matrix, which takes normally in, in college maths 7 marks. Yeah. They need to know how to transpose before they find the cofactor matrix. Thank you, guys. Inverse of a matrix, or we invert it. Let me start on a very low note. If somebody gives you a number, for example, 3, raised to negative 1, means invert it. The inverse is the common language to middle school under the Cambridge. Uh, the reciprocal is like getting 1 over 3. But remember, inverse of a matrix... We don't invert it, but I'll teach you how we go about it. Because if you take 3 times 1 over 3, we simply get 1. So what have I done? I've taken the 3 times its inverse. So many a times you take a matrix, you multiply by its inverse, you get an identity matrix. Yeah, When you take a matrix times its inverse, you get an identity. But if you take the inverse of the inverse of a matrix, you get that particular matrix. That's very important. Just like, I, I, though I didn't say it, that if you get the determinant of AB, it's the same as the determinant of a matrix times the determinant of the other matrix. Yeah? So if you just get the product of two matrices, it's the same as the product of their determinants. Right? For example, I can give you 4, 6, 3, 5. If that is matrix A, then matrix B may be 1, 2, 7, 4. Now, can we get the determinant of the product AB? So means, I'll start with the product first. 4 plus 42 is 46. 3 plus 35 is 38. Uh, then 8 plus 24 is 32, 6 plus 20 is 26. Let's get the determinant of that, which is the leading diagonals product minus minor. 46 times 26 
minus 32 times 38. So what do we get when we multiply? Did I have the, the calculator over here? Not really. We can just multiply. So 46 times 26, we get 36, carry 3, 24, 27, 12, we carry 1, 8, 10. Okay, in a nutshell, if you get this, it should be the same as the determinant of this minus times the determinant of A. So the two should give you, make some sense. Now, let me teach you how to find the inverse of a two by two matrix. And of course, we can never find the inverse of a matrix that is not square. Okay, let's have a matrix, an example, seven, negative three, two, four. If that is our matrix T, then somebody comes and asks you, find the T inverse. Remember in matrices, they raise it to a negative power. Now, if you want to find uh, the inverse of that particular matrix, what you are supposed to do, first of all, the steps. You know, these are the steps of finding inverse. Step one, you have to find the determinant. You have to find the determinant of that matrix. How do we find determinant? The leading diagonal minus minor. So you will take 7 times 4. You will minus 2 times minus 3. Then, aha. Uh -huh. So we get here 28 minus. Remember this is a negative. So 2 times minus 3 is minus 6. So minus minus becoming plus 6 which is 34. So that is the step one in finding the inverse of matrix. Step two, you have to find, uh, because you have to find the adjoint matrix. Because remember for you to get the inverse, you take one over the determinant of that matrix times what is called the adjoint matrix. Now, we take one over 34 into how do we find the adjoint matrix? You interchange the leading diagonals entries. So 4 comes up, 7 comes down. But the minor diagonals remain, but you alter the nature of their signs. If it was a negative, it becomes a positive. If it was a positive, it becomes a negative. Then just like somebody multiplying by a scalar product, this multiplies everything. So you get 4 over 34, 3 over 34, negative 2 over 34, 7 over 34. So the matrix we have here, this is the inverse of this matrix 7, negative 3, 2, 4. You can pause my video and try to internalize what I'm talking about. What I've simply said, when you have a 2 by 2 matrix and you want to find the inverse, the step number one is to find the determinant. How do we find the determinant? The leading diagonals product minus the minor which we got it here. Step number two, we take one over that determinant times the adjoint. What is the adjoint of the matrix? We interchange the leading diagonals entries. Four comes there, seven comes down. Then we change the nature of the sign of the minor diagonals elements. Then we open the bracket of that particular matrix. Correct. Let me now teach you how to find the inverse of a three by three. Here comes, uh, let me give you one, maybe three, two. Two, negative one, four, six, three, maybe five. Allow this maybe be seven if you like. Now, if this is the matrix M, then somebody find asking you find M inverse. How do we earn our seven marks? The first step, the first step is to find determinant of that matrix. How do we find the determinant? We start with the plus, minus, then plus. So we take plus 7 into. You see when you identify here, you will delete the entire row and the entire column. So we'll delete this. So what will remain will be negative 1, 4, 3, 5. So we are going to have negative 1, 4, 3, 5. Then the next step, minus 3. Then we do the same. Where there is 3, you delete the entire column 
and the entire row. So the elements that remain is what you fix there. So the numbers remaining is 2, 4, 6, 5. 2, 4, 6, 5. 2, 4, 6, 5. Then we go to plus 2. And plus 2, we identify that, then we delete the entire column and the entire row. Whatever remains is 2, negative 1, 6, 3. 2, negative 1, 6, 3. Then, how do we find this determinant? Is 7 into negative 1 times 5 is negative 5. 3 times 4 is 12. Negative 5 minus 12 is minus 17. Then minus 3 here. 2 times 5 is 10. 10 minus 24 is negative 14. Plus 2. 3 times 2 is 6. 6 minus minus 6. Remember it's negative 1 times 6. So 6 minus minus 6 is 6 plus 6, which is 12. So here we get, uh, what is 17 times 7? We get 119. Uh, minus minus is plus 42. Then we get plus 24. Then we do the addition. 119 plus 66. We get 581. So the answer is, 185. This is this will only earn you one mark. At this step, you just have only one mark because you have not found the inverse. You have only worked out the determinant. So that is step one. Step one is to find what? Is to find the determinant of that matrix. Step two, that is very, very important. Allow me rub here so that I can explain. Step, the other step that is very, very key and very, very important. Uh -huh. We are going to find what is called a cofactor matrix. Cofactor matrix. How do we find the cofactor matrix? We get, first of all, we need to have our bracket. Then we put plus, minus, plus. Minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus. Now, when we want to get the cofactor, allow me wrap this, but it was 7, 3, 2. It was supposed to be 7, 3, 2. Okay, now look here. We want to know this cofactor. How do we find the cofactors? First of all, you come, if you want to get the element here, which is the same as where there is 7, you highlight that 7. Then you delete everything else. You delete everything in that column and in that row. So like that. Okay? So what do you think is remaining? What remains is negative 1, 4, 3, 5. So we have negative 1, 4, 3, 5. You write it down. Because if you find that determinant and fix it there, that will be the cofactor at that particular point. So then you want to find what falls here. Or allow me Rabia so that we make it clear. So whatever falls there was supposed to be negative one, four, three, five at that point. And remember it was a plus, then the next should be a minus, then the next should be a plus, the next is a minus, then a plus, then a minus, then a plus, then a minus, then lastly a plus. So we have to feed those ones, what we call the cofactor matrices. So when you want to find the element here, which is in the, the second column, first row, which is the same as this three, highlight that three, then delete everything in that row and in that column. So whatever remains is what we feed there, which is supposed to be, Two, four, six, five. So we have two, four, six, five. Then when you want to get the element here, you identify there which is two, delete that column and that row. Then see the numbers that remain. Two, negative one, six, three. Two, negative one, six, three. If you want to find the element here, which is where this two is, highlight that, that to delete that column and that row. So we delete it like this. So whatever remain will be 3, 2, 3, 5. 
So we get 3, 2, 3, 5. Then the element in the middle, like here in the middle, highlight the middle, delete the entire column and the entire row. So like that. So what will remain will be 7, 2, 6, 5. 7, 2, 6, 5. Then at this corner here, which is like that four, delete that column and that row. So whatever remains will be 7363. 7363. Three. Then you go to the last bottom corner here, identify the six, delete that column and that row, delete that column and that row. So whatever remains will be 32. Negative one four. Three two negative one four. Three two negative one four. If you want the element here and the middle bottom at that point, delete that column and that row like that. So whatever that will remain will be seven two two four. Seven two two four. Then lastly at that corner, which is a five, delete that and delete that. So we remain with seven three two negative one. 7, 3, 2, negative 1. Well, now after doing that, uh -huh. after you've done that, uh, I don't know how I'd set my about 6 minutes. Now, after you've done all that, now remember these are cofactor matrices. The cofactor matrix is what we will transpose to form the heart joint. So what we are supposed to do here, we are going to find them individually. Remember this was supposed to be bracketed. So we are going to have our matrix here. So guide me through. So minus 1 times 5 is minus 5. 3 times 4 is 12. So minus 5 minus 12 is minus 17. Then here, 2 times 5 is 10. 10 minus 24 is minus 14, but minus minus is becoming plus 14. 3 times 2 is 6. 6 minus 6 minus minus 6, which is 12, because we add it now. Then 15 minus 6 uh, is, what is that? 9. 15 minus 6 is 9, but remember it was a negative. Uh, 35 minus 12. What is 35 minus 12? It's like 25 minus 2, which is 23. Uh, 21 minus 18. 21 minus 18 is 3. But remember it's a negative. Negative 3. Uh, 12 minus minus 2. So it's 12 plus 2 which is 14. Uh, 28 minus 4 which is 24. But remember it was a negative outside. Negative 24. Negative 7 minus 6 which is minus 7 minus 6 which is minus 13. So when you find this matrix you have to transpose it. You have to transpose it because your interest is now to find. Allow me wrap this part. I will explain. Now step two, to find the inverse of that matrix, one over, what did we find? We got 185 was our determinant. Remember for you to get the inverse of a matrix is one over determinant of that matrix times adjoint. But our adjoint in this case, our adjoint is, is cofactor transpose. Is cofactor transpose. So we have to get the cofactor, then we transpose it. Now, what do we get here? So allow me wrap this part. So it is 1 over 185 into. So I have to transpose here. I make my row 1 to be column 1, negative 17. 14 and 12. I make my row 2 to be column 2. Negative 9, 23, negative 3. I make my row 3 to be column 3, which is 14, negative 24, uh, and negative 13. Then we open this bracket. So we get negative 17 over 185, negative 9 over 185, 14 over 185, 14 over 185, 23 over 185, negative 24 over 185, 12 over 185, 
negative 3 over 185, negative 13 over 185. So this is the inverse of that matrix. That's how you can earn your seven marks. So guys, it's not a difficult thing. It's very easy. It's just knowing, getting the determinant. After finding the determinant, we put it somewhere. Then we get the cofactor matrices. Then after getting cofactor matrices, we transpose it. After transposing it, we call it the adjoint of a 3 by 3. So I think it is as easy as it, the name states. So people are going through A-levels, even people at the university, uh, the masters, like my students doing quantitative analysis and techniques, you can definitely do this. So I want to do one more question on a 3 by 3. Then we call it a day. So guys, allow me to...